Hello and welcome back. So in this lecture, what I want to do is talk about ways that scientists view bones. I want to talk about normal x-rays, some look at some fractured uh, bones uh, using x-rays. I want to talk about bone diseases and, uh, and then finalize with uh, a discussion of joints. So we'll go ahead and start out with, um, with uh, ways that scientists can view bones. One way we can view bones is through a CAT scan. A CAT scan is a series of, of x-rays that they put together. Uh, what's nice about a CAT scan is they can show you hard bones. So you can look at bones such as the calcaneus right here and meta uh, tarsals and then some of your other tarsal bones. Um, you can view soft tissues like muscle tissue and then tendons. Um, MRIs uh, use a little bit of different technology. They use uh, magnetic fields that are created and uh, they give you a, the ability to see a little bit better soft tissues. You can see right here, this would be the Achilles tendon. Uh, you can see muscle tissue, you can see bones. This person's still young, there's an epiphyseal plate right there. So it gives you a little bit more resolution with uh, soft tissues. Uh, we would use bone scans to kind of detect where bone cancer might be um, forming. So we give a person a radioactive tracer and then we use a bone scan to detect where there are uh, high areas of, of metabolic activity or cell growth. So you can see in these areas that I've circled, these would be places where tumors are likely to exist. And then of course we use normal x-rays. This is probably what you're most familiar with in, um, in your dealings with, uh, with medical uh, technology. So in, when I show you these normal x-rays, what I want you to do is to kind of get a little review of the bones. You will have one to test some of these bones. So you know it's important that you look at these x-rays and be able to identify the bones that, um, that all the bones because you have to know all the bones. So in this normal x-ray here, you can see kind of where the lungs would be. So this is the left lung and then the right lung over here. Um, the heart's kind of off to the side just a little bit to the left side. Um, so normal lungs should all be clear inside of here. There's still some kind of grainy material there. So I'm, I'm not sure what that's, what's that is, but it should be nice and clear. A couple of bones that you can see, you can see the clavicle here. You can see the scapula through. You can see the humerus. This is the humerus over here. These are cervical vertebrae, and then I can't see them, but thoracic vertebrae, of course, would be down in here. Uh, I can see ribs, and uh, that's about what I can see in this particular x-ray. So this is a skull, and uh, an x-ray of a skull. You can see the occipital bone, you can see the parietal bone, you can see the frontal bone, uh, you can see the maxilla, mandible, uh, cervical vertebrae. All these vertebrae here are cervical. One, two, three, four, five, six. So all of these are cervical vertebrae. I can see the trans, excuse me, the spinous process. And then coming towards you, I can see the transverse processes right there. And that's the body of the vertebrae. You can also see intervertebral discs. These would be located right here. So right here would be intervertebral discs. And, uh, and then I can see various sinuses here and here and here and here. So you can see some of the sinuses of the, uh, of the face. This is just a better view of the sinuses showing you the frontal, the ethmoid, the maxillary, sphenoid. Um, and you can see there are wisdom teeth here. They're, um, they appear to be either still in there or slightly coming out. And you can see normal teeth. This is kind of cool. You can kind of see the, the, kind of the tooth as it's, as it's sitting in the bone and some of the pulp area where the nerves and blood vessels come into the tooth. So moving down a little bit, we can see uh, lumbar vertebrae. Uh, and so, you know, eventually the, the sacrum would be right in this area here. And then your little tailbone would be back over here. Uh, I can see coxal bones. So this is one pelvic bone right here. Um, you can see the obturator foramen. The acetabulum is the place where the head of the femur comes in and joins with the, um, with the pelvic bone, and that's the head of the femur right there. So this bone right here would be femur. Um, so there's some things you can see in this particular graphic. So this would be, this would be a hand. Uh, I really won't really ask you to do carpals, like individual carpals. I'll, I'll have a picture of that for you to do for testing purposes. But those are your carpals, your metacarpals, and then these are your... Uh, your phalanges. So you have the, pro the, the distal, middle, and proximal phalanx. So those are your phalanges. And then we have, since this is the thumb over here, in line with the thumb would be the radius 
and then the ulna would be over here. So this would be the radius over here, and this would be the ulna over here. Okay, the ulna is aligned with the with the uh, with the pinky finger. So this is showing you the uh, ulna. So here's the ulna right here, and then the radius is right here. So that's the radius. That's the olecranon process right there, head of the radius. Um, you then have the humerus coming down in this particular picture. And you can see some of the soft tissues here. It's just a back view of the arm here, so you can see the, the uh, olecranon process, which is right here. And of course you have radius, ulna, humerus. So this is a posterior view of the, uh, of the knee over here. The patella you can see over here. And uh, you can see the, so it's like you're looking through the bone seeing the patella. Here you have the, uh, the femur and the tibia and the fibula over here. Uh, and then so over here you have uh, a leg and uh, this happens to be um, the right leg. So you can see some of the tarsals. Calcaneus is really easy to see. Um, and then you can see some of the metatarsals there. Here's the kneecap, and here's the femur, and here's the tibia and the fibula coming together and articulating. So this is just a foot showing you in some different locations. We have the tarsals all up in here, and, uh, and we do have the uh, tibia and fibula that you can basically see right in here. Uh, over here we have the big toe, two phalanges. Here we have metatarsals, and then the tarsals begin down here. So now I'm going to go through and show you a few of the uh, abnormal x-rays. These will be ones where you have um, breaks or fractures. So this is a fractured frontal bone. You can see a little crack right there. This is a nail gun accident where you have a nail going through the cranium. And of course you can see cervical vertebrae, occipital, parietal, frontal, you know, teeth, mandible. Again, nail gun accident. This one just went through the face. It didn't even enter into really the brain tissue. So I was pretty lucky. This is a fishing spear, a three, uh, a three foot fishing spear that's gone through a person's cranium. So there's lots of accidents that people can have for sure. This is just showing a reconstructed skull, the fractured nature of this. It's just amazing how, um, how much uh, medical technology can, can, can you know, help people out. So here we have a cavity. And this is under a tooth. You can see kind of the root of the tooth, and there's the little pulp cavity going up through there that will um, that has nerves and blood vessels coming through. You can see them right there really easily. And this is a cavity. So this has been filled, or a filling. You can see a filling up here as well. So this is what normal teeth look like. You can see the whole tooth. It's, it's actually into this. Uh, it's into the the mandible or uh, maxilla, and this is the pulp cavity back up in here. Okay, so this is where the nerves and blood vessels would be that feed the tooth. So here we have uh, a, a fractured clavicle. The clavicle should be nice and whole, but you can see it's splintered into two pieces. This is piece number one, piece number two. So that's a fractured clavicle. You can see normal bones like the ribs, the scapula is back here, and then the humerus. You can see at least the head of the humerus right here. And these are cervical vertebrae back up in here. This is just showing you uh, them putting a clavicle back together using a series of, uh, of uh, metal rods and screws. This appears to be a, uh, you know, I'm not a doctor, but this appears to be a, a green stick fracture. Probably the force or trauma occurred this way and then it bowed and broke the bone on the, outs on the opposite side. Um, I can't see, it looks like this person's young, I can see little growth lines right there. So this is probably a green stick fracture there of the, of the, um, the ulna and the radius. This is uh, really a broken into multiple pieces, so kind of a comminuted fracture there. 
uh, and this would be the ulna here because I can see the elbow, the olecranon process, and this would be the radius over here. Uh, it appears there is some trauma over here as well with your metatarsals. Okay, so this to me appears to be a spiral fracture. So you have tension that spiraled the bone um, and broken the humerus here. I can see the, uh, the ulna and the radius. And uh, this is a kind of a, um, a humerus uh, joint replacement. So they've taken and removed the head of the humerus and part of the scapula, and they're articulating it now with a with a new prosthesis. Uh, probably it's it's either Teflon or metallic in nature. So that's basically put into, drilled into, and put placed into the bone, and then that is the new joint that is created. So this is uh, just showing you how we can use metal rods and pins to put a femur back together. And this is just a comminuted fracture of the femur. And it's just showing you some screws that they put into a tibia there. This is the fibula, tibia, femur, patella. So this is a total knee replacement. So we will take out part of the femur, grind it out, put in a, uh, a replacement joint or replacement part, usually made out of Teflon, stainless steel, or other materials. Here we shaved off the tibia, and we now have an insertion between those two. So the patella they leave in place, and uh, that's called a total knee replacement. What do you see wrong with this picture? Yeah, so you notice there's no kneecaps. So this person doesn't have kneecaps. Um, this is the epiphyseal plate, so that you can tell this person's a young person. This is the femur, the tibia, and the fibula. This is a total hip replacement. They'll shave out the acetabulum of the, of the uh, pelvic bone. They'll then cut off the femur, so the femur used to be you know, here. They cut all that out and inserted a, um, a stainless steel or Teflon uh, replacement part. You can see the threaded screws where they screw this, uh, this cup into the uh, pelvic bone. So that's kind of cool. You can see symphysis pubis right there, obturator foramen. Just another total uh, hip replacement. The screws go right, in, right into that cavity there, which is kind of interesting. So this is a dislocated uh, ankle. So you can see that uh, the bones here have slipped uh, across, and uh, this would be the uh, tibia, and this would be the fibula over here, and the tibia is just separated from where it articulates with the tarsals. I can see real nice the calcaneus there and the talus, and these would be your other tarsal bones here. Just showing you a screw through the calcaneus, kind of interesting. Must have, they must have had a major trauma there. And, uh, and this is some, these are some metatarsals, phalanges, and some of the other tarsals. So this is showing uh, arthritic bones. You can see the little swelling there of the bones, the little swelling there, just swollen. Each one of these joints is swollen, and that represents, um, you know, bone material growing out and arthritis happening. This is an old person's foot. There's no growth lines that I can see, but I can see metatarsals and phalanges pretty easily. So this is a fractured metatarsal. Um, you know, wearing high heel shoes is not so good for you, uh, especially these. Wow, they look like they're four inch stilettos. Um, but you can see it puts an unusual pressure that uh, on the uh, on this joint here between the uh, the metatarsal and the phalange. So um, it's a very easy way to put extra stress on that and damage that particular joint. I just thought it's kind of interesting looking at animal skeletons as well. And uh, the top one is of a dog that ate a little plastic toy. So that's kind of cool. And it's in its intestines. And you can see here a human has a key in their intestines. Uh, I don't know if they swallowed it or it was inserted in the other direction. This right here represents a compressed vertebrae. See, it's fractured. It's been compressed and fractured. Uh, intervertebral discs can be seen right there. 
uh, this will be the body of the vertebrae. Scoliosis is a relatively common condition where you have a, um, a flexure of the, a lateral flexure of the vertebrae. Vertebrae should be nice and, and uh, vertically oriented and not flexed to one side or the other. Um, this person had a rod put in, so scoliosis can be corrected by putting lines, uh, rods in uh, or through the uh, use of exercise um, and physical therapy and perhaps even braces. So you can just see here the scoliosis of the spine. Um, lots of vertebrae you can see here. You can see cervical vertebrae, thoracic vertebrae, and lumbar vertebrae, ribs, clavicle, humerus, scapula. So lots of good things that you can see in this particular diagram. You don't want let scoli you don't want let scoliosis to go too long because that it will continue to bow um, and uh, and gravity will pull it so that uh, you lose vertical height and it could be problematic later on. So rickets is where you have um, a deficiency in uh, vitamin D and you can't absorb calcium. So the bones will actually become flexible. If you remember back in the lab, we did a lab where we put bones in acid and we found that the bones in acid, um, you know, all the hydroxyapatite crystals are dissolved and the bone is flexible because only the collagen matrix is left over. So you can see these children here have bowed legs. Sometimes they go like this because of lack of vitamin D and the absorption of calcium. So these uh, x-rays here, you probably can see that there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven extra fingers. So that can sometimes happen. Sometimes fingers can be fused. You can see right here the fusion. So there wasn't a complete separation of the skin in between those fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's what a person with six fingers looks like. Typically, the extra finger is non-functional because there are no real muscles attached to it where it can do any work. Um, this is club foot, and it's just an abnormal growing of the bones. And that's what club foot looks under, like under an x-ray. From the outside, this is what arthritis looks like. So you have swellings and nodules that form. This is what it looks like under the um, x-ray. So this is what a sarcoma looks like, an osseous sarcoma, um, and uh, this would be a, bar, a bone sarcoma under x-ray, and this is what it looks like in growth structure, and then in um, another growth structure of it. So epiphyseal plate can be seen right there, articular cartilage, spongy bone, compact bone. So there's a lot of things you can see from here, and here's the tumor coming out of the bone. Okay, so those are some normal and uh, abnormal x-rays, and I just wanted you to get a sense of what those look like. For the rest of this lecture, what I want to do is take and talk about what a joint is. Um, this is not something I'm going to super emphasize, but I do want you to, to understand a couple joints and what these represent. So a joint is a point of contact between uh, two or more bones, uh, cartilage and bone, or teeth and bone. So these are what joints um, by definition are. Uh, I want to talk about three major kinds of joints, and I'm really not going to talk about the subdivisions of these three types of joints, but, but if you go into physical therapy, you're going to learn a lot more uh, about um, the different subdivisions of, of these three major types of joints. But I, I don't have time. If I spend a lot of time on joints, I, I'll, I'll lose time on talking about the nervous system, and I find that that's a really important system to, uh, to get into as well. So the first type of joint is a fibrous joint. The fibrous joint is going to lack what we call a synovial cavity. This is a fluid-filled cavity um, that we'll talk about in just a few minutes. Uh, the articulating bones are held together with, uh, with a dense irregular connective tissue. So this is what a fibrous joint has. It's lots of dense irregular connective tissue. And it, it permits little or no movement. A good example of a fibrous joint would be something like uh, the suture uh, between your, uh, your cranial bones. So you can see there's a sutural ligament, and uh, it's made of dense irregular connective tissue, and here's your bone here, and here's your bone here. You know, there's a little bit of movement that it can occur, but eventually over time your sutures will fuse together. But slight, very slight movement will occur in this particular joint. 
So a couple more examples of fibrous joints. You might have a fibrous joint uh, uh, in, in between the, um, the fibula and tibia. So this material here would be creating a joint that's not real super flexible. Very little movement occurs, but it does connect those bones together to make them stronger. And then your teeth, when your teeth articulate in with your, uh, with your bone, um, there is a ligament there, the periodontal ligament, that uh, is going to, uh, to essentially glue your, uh, or, or put in place your teeth. Now you can break that ligament by putting a pair of pliers on the crown of the tooth and ripping it out, but uh, it does a pretty good job of holding up. Cartilaginous joints also are going to uh, lack a synovial cavity. The articulating bones are going to be held together with hyaline cartilage or fiber cartilage, and they prevent little or no movement as well. So a couple good of examples, a good examples of, of these joints would be the uh, epiphyseal growth plate that you can see right there. It is made of hyaline cartilage and connects those bone parts together. We also have the symphysis pubis, which is held together by a fiber cartilage. And then the one, the, the joints we want to talk mainly about are the synovial joints. These are these are super complex, and I hope you get an appreciation of the complexity by the time you finish listening to this lecture. Um, synovial joints do have a synovial cavity. The articulating bones are covered with articular cartilage. Okay, this is a, a hyaline cartilage that uh, that's going to cushion the bones from impact. Uh, you're going to have ligaments that are going to hold the bones together. Um, this joint is going to contain a lubricating uh, fluid that redu reduces friction. Um, they do have a nerve and blood supply, and uh, they do have a capsule that surrounds them made of dense irregular connective tissue, an articular capsule. They permit a really uh, large range of motion. And so what I want to talk to you first about is kind of a generic uh, stereotypical synovial joint and uh, show you the parts of it and then we'll look at um, at uh, the more specific synovial joints like the elbow, the knee, uh, and the hip and shoulder. Um, if you go into physical therapy assistance program or physical, you become a physical therapy, uh, a physical therapist one day, you will really uh, make uh, most of your money from elbows and knees and shoulders these are these in hips. These are places where they're just easy to tear, easy to damage, and as you get older, they just wear out. So here we have um, uh, the articulating bones. So you can see this is a, just a generic bone here and a generic bone here coming together. So in a synovial joint, you do have articulating bones. You will have articular cartilage. So it's a little pad of hyaline cartilage that separates the two bones from each other and uh, allows for cushioning to occur. It's very tough. This, this hyaline cartilage is, is very, very tough material. So um, there is a membrane called the synovial membrane, and here it's, uh, it's labeled in red or colored in red. The synovial membrane produces the, the uh, synovial fluid, which is the straw-colored material that's inside of this, of this um, joint cavity right here. That's a lubricating fluid. It's slippery, slimy, and uh, water is hard to compress. So it, uh, it does a really great job of helping to make um, these bones not rub up against one another. We have the joint capsule on the outside surface, made of that dense irregular connective tissue. And it can be pulled in many different d directions because it's irregular connective tissue. It can be pulled in many different directions, and the collagenous fibers uh, give it great strength in all different dimensions. Um, you can see the bone skin up here, and typically we have ligaments. They're not showing you ligaments in this particular picture here, but there would be ligaments that would be, you know, connecting bone to bone. I'm just drawing a ligament through here, uh, and there may be ligaments that are co connecting bone to bone in, in this dimension here as well. If you look at the, the knee joint, you have multiple ligaments connecting in. Now, in addition to all those parts I just talked about, there are also bursae and tendon sheaths. Bursae and tendon sheaths can be found at many synovial joints. Um, the bursae are, are bursa singular. It's going to be a sac-like structure filled with synovial fluid and it cushions the movement of one body part over another. Uh, we see these a lot in the shoulder and in the knee and you'll look at those in a second. Tendon sheaths are tube-like bursae. They wrap around tendons and um, they protect the tendons from being, um, you know, uh, 
being pulled across bones and uh, and the friction of that particular activity. Okay. So let's get into our first major synovial joint, and this is going to be a hinge joint uh, called the knee joint. And uh, just to kind of give you some of the players, we have the femur and the tibia. These will be the articulating bones. The patella will sit in the front su surface of that uh, particular joint. Uh, this has all the parts of a, t of a particular of a, of a stereotypical joint. It has a synovial membrane that makes synovial fluid. Um, it does have synovial fluid, which is the blue fluid. It's inside of the synovial cavity there. Um, there are uh, going to be um, bursa. You can see the prepatellar bursa right there, a fluid-filled packet. Uh, it does have a synovial membrane, and it makes synovial fluid. Uh, you also have the uh, uh, fat that packs this in. So if you look at the yellow substance there, it's fat that kind of packs this joint and makes it strong. We have extra little pads of tissue called menisci. These are extra little cushions that, uh, that help this joint to stay articulated and to cushion the two bones from hitting each other. Um, and uh, we also have articular cartilage, which is hyaline cartilage that cushions those the ends of those two bones. I mean, there's a lot of parts to this. This is a very complex joint. You have the infrapatellar bursa. You have the prepatellar bursa suprapatellar bursa, so we have a lot of fluid-filled packets that are aiding and cushioning this particular, uh, this particular joint. Uh, it's an amazing joint, and uh, it's very easy to damage, um, as you'll see with all the parts I'm going to show you that it has. So in this particular anterior view of this uh, joint, you can see the uh, articulating bones. So we have the tibia here and the femur here. They've removed the patella, so you don't have that blocking our view there. But um, on either side, this shows you a really good um, image of the, of the ligaments that are connecting the bones together. So over here, we have the fibular collateral ligament, um, also known as the lateral collateral ligament, or LCL. We have over here the um, tibial collateral ligament, also known as the uh, as the MCL. We have the anterior cruciate ligament or the ACL in the anterior portion connecting the femur with the tibia. In the back surface we have the posterior cruciate ligament that connects the back side of that into the femur and the tibia. Okay, so you can tear any of those kinds of things. There's all kinds of, a, there's a medial meniscus, a lateral meniscus, that little pad that helps to cushion um, this uh, this particular joint. You know, you can tear the, the, the menisci as well. So, very, very complex structure there. This is showing you a superior view, uh, showing you the tibia with the femur removed, and you can see a nice view of the lateral and medial meniscus. You can see the cut tibial uh, collateral ligament and uh, fibril collater uh, collateral ligament. Uh, and, uh, and then you can see the anterior cruciate and the posterior cruciate. These have been cut so you can see how they articulate in. Very, very complex. And then you have the patellar ligament connecting the tibia to the, uh, to the patella. This is uh, an actual human, skull, uh, human version here. Uh, you can see various things. Um, and um, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see this here. So you can see... The, what the capsule looks like. You can see the patellar uh, ligaments, the patella, and you can see what the meniscus kind of looks like in gross structure, and there's your fibular collateral ligament and lateral, excuse me, uh, tibial uh, col uh, collateral ligament. Um, so just gross structure of that. And there's a tendon coming in down here to just give you just a view of what the colors look like. And this is just a posterior view of that where you can see the menisci on either side, you can see the anterior cruciate ligament, and uh, and uh, you can see the um, the tibial and uh, fibular collateral ligaments. Again, just a gross structure of that. And uh, this is just uh, one more view, just giving you a little bit more detail, just to show you the complexity of it. Here we have the femur, the tibia. You can see the articular cartilage, the menisci. You can see the joint, the, the, the actual cavity there. Patella right there. You got your tendon coming down here. 
and your and your patellar ligament coming down here. So there's a muscle attached to the kneecap here, and then this is just connecting the kneecap. This patellar lig ligament is connecting the kneecap to the uh, to the tibia. Packed all in fat, muscle tissue. You can see the muscle tissue is all kind of connected in. Um, so really kind of a cool structure. And this is just a, a sagittal uh, gross structure showing you the bone, articular cartilage, the menisci, the patella. Here's your patellar uh, tendon there, and then patellar ligament. Okay, I could go on and on and on about complexity of it. Uh, I mean, so you, you can see now when we put um, more superficial stuff on top of it, um, you can see the um, you can see the various uh, you know structures like the femur, the patella. The tibia. You can see how these things connect in, which is kind of nice. Here you have your patellar ligament there, and then your little tendon that connects the uh, the the upper leg muscles the um, um, to the patella. So you can see muscle tissue kind of coming in and surrounding this thing. You have your various ligaments that are all in there. So just just an amazingly complex. Look at the back surface of it. Just amazingly complex. Um, joint. So another ball and socket joint would be your, excuse me, the first ball and socket joint we'll talk about will be the um, the one that uh, is your shoulder joint. So the shoulder joint does have all the same parts as any typical synovial joint. Uh, you have your synovial membrane making your synovial fluid. Here's the actual synovial cavity right in here. You have your articular cartilage on the ends of your bones, articular cartilage here um, that are on the inside surface of the scapula. Uh, we have the scapula over here, clavicle over here. We do have uh, the bursa. Uh, we do have a joint capsule covering the whole thing. And then there's ligaments that are not shown in this particular view. So like the knee joint, the L uh, the uh, the um, the shoulder joint is very complex. This just shows you kind of cool the cool bursa here and here. So this will show you a um, uh, various kinds of ligaments. Look at all the ligaments. I'm not going to require you to know all these these connections in. It's just a little bit of an overkill for this review class or overview class. But look at all the ligaments that are holding that joint together. And you can tear any one of those with no problem. Okay, just tons and tons and tons of ligaments holding all those things together. This is just showing you uh, kind of a frontal plane of it. So if we took and did a frontal plane, you can see the head of the humerus and how it articulates with the, uh, with the scapula. So we do have the glenoid cavity, which is the space in between the, the humerus and the uh, scapula. Articular cartilage, you can see there. Uh, you can see various uh, tendons coming in and connecting in, which is kind of cool. Very complex, though, in its arrangement. Just a gross structure of that, showing what it looks like in a, in a sectioned human being with the muscles and the, and the bones and the articular cartilage. So just kind of interesting to look at. So this is the hip joint. This is one that's oftentimes uh, worn out too because uh, we just, you know, overuse and we live a long time. Uh, you can see the pelvis and you can see the femur. So this is going to be the acetabulum right up in here where the head of the femur is going to articulate, where the head of the femur is going to articulate with the um, pelvic bone. Uh, you know, it's got the same thing, joint cavity, articular cartilage, synovial membrane. Um, there are ligaments. The ligamentum capitis uh, fits into the fovea capitis and then connects into the, uh, it'll connect in over here to the, um, to the, uh, to the uh, pelvic bone um, right there near the obturator foramen. Okay, so same parts that we've seen before. Lots of ligaments hold this, this joint together, as you can see right there. Again, I'm not going to make you know all these. Um, uh, if you look at your study guide, that will indicate the things that you'll be responsible for. But I'm just showing you the complexity and the beauty of how all these ligaments hold those articulating bones together. There's so much room for error and damage. 
Now the elbow joint is uh, is one that I definitely want you to know. I would like for you to be able to draw it. I, if you look at your study guide, um, there's uh, there's a little thing where it tells you to go ahead and draw the uh, elbow joint. Um, you have to have three articulating bones. So you have to have the hu the the ulna, the uh, radius, and the humerus coming in together. Uh, you know you want to have the head of the humerus down here with the art with the articular cartilage, synovial membrane. You want to have articular cartilage on this side over here. And uh, so, and then you could see some of the, uh, where the joint capsule covers the whole thing, but there would be ligaments coming down that we'll be connecting in. So here's a ligament right here, connecting bones to bone. So just to show you the complexity of it, look at all the ligaments connecting those bones together. So again, you have the humerus, the ulna, the radius, and each of these white cords is a different ligament in a different dimension. This is actually a tendon right here, but there's different ligaments and different dimensions holding things together. Okay, so uh, let me stop right here for a second and get a blank slide so I can show you how to draw that particular uh, joint. So I'm just going to go down here and get me a blank slide. And uh, so... On your on your paper, you know you can uh, take and uh, and uh, sketch just into the side um, uh, a, a quick elbow joint. So in your elbow joint drawing, you want to make sure that you have you want to make sure that you have the humerus, and then I'm going to separate the ulna and the radius. Okay, you want to be able to name those things. You know, have a ligament coming down, so you'll have a ligament there. Okay, so have those particular parts there. We'll go ahead and make the synovial membrane. So this will be the synovial membrane there. And the little dots represent synovial fluid that's inside. Uh, we'll also put in some articular cartilage. Articular cartilage will be here, padding the ends of the bones. So this is articular cartilage over here, padding the ends of the bones. So that is good there. Let's go ahead and throw in our joint capsule, which covers everything. So that joint capsule covers everything that you have there. Uh, you could have a muscle coming in. So, so here would be a bicep muscle coming in and articulating. This would be a tendon. This would be a muscle. You could also have one more ligament coming over here, so this would be a ligament coming in over here, so this would be a ligament. And if we named all these things, this would be the joint capsule, synovial membrane, the green stuff is articular cartilage, have the humerus, ulna, radius, and then the little blue dots would represent uh, synovial fluid so synovial fluid okay so that's how you would go about drawing a, uh, an elbow joint and I, I think it is important for you to be able to draw at least one joint and that's the one I'd like for you to draw it's the, like the simplest one that you can do that's a synovial joint um, and it's it's just an interesting one to do so I forgot a little articular cartilage here too let's make sure we put some articular cartilage here too as well Okay, so that's how to draw a, a synovial joint. Well, the body can flex in many different kinds of ways. Uh, it's not a big point that I'm going to make, but you should be familiar with uh, the way that we term the ways that joints move. So we, you know, have uh, when you bring your head back, that's hypertension. So going backwards is extension, and flexion is going forward. Okay. So uh, if you look at the shoulder joint, hyperextension is taking your arm backwards, flexion is taking it uh, forwards, and when you go this way, it's extending. So if you look at the, uh, the elbow joint, flexion is going towards the body, extension is going away from it. And then if you look at the wrist joint, we have bringing your palm forward is flexion, bringing your palm backward is extension. And you can hyperextend it all the way to where it stops moving. So if we look at the hip joint, so bringing your foot forward is called flexion. Bringing it back would be extension. And then hyperextension would be the furthest point that you could take it back. 
knee joint, bringing it towards the leg would be flexion, bringing it away would be extension. And then intervertebral joints, so flexing to the side would be lateral flexion. Some of these are important. Some of these joints are important to know for when we go into studying the muscles because you do have muscles that are called abductors, ab, ab, ductors. Then there's some that are adductors, ad, adductor, adductors. So it's important to know the movements that they create so you understand what the muscle's doing. So at the shoulder joint, we have adduction is bringing the arm back towards and resting it to the side of the body. Abduction is bringing it out to the side. So your wrist joint, you can abduct the hand that way or adduct it back towards the midline of the body. So the hip joint, we have adduction, bringing the foot back toward the midline. Abduction is bringing it out to the side. So abduction for the fingers is flexing or opening the fingers. Adduction is closing the fingers together. So if you take your arm and move it around in a circle, that's called circumduction. You can do the same thing with the leg. You can circumduct the leg as well. There are many, many, many different ways that the, that the, um, that the joints in the wrist work, and one of them is through gliding. So there's gliding motions that occur there. So you can rotate the head from side to side. So that's kind of like a pivoting uh, rotation. Um, you can do lateral rotation where you can move your arm in the direction as you can see there. Moving the arm from the outside and rotating in across the belly would be a, a, a rotation. If you go to the outside, it's a lateral rotation. If you go to the inside, it's a medial rotation. Same thing with your foot. You can do a lateral rotation and a medial rotation of your, of your foot. So if we elevate the jaw, we call that elevation. If we open the jaw, we call that depression. So if we take the mandible and bring it forward, that's called protraction. If we take the mandible and bring it back, that's called retraction. So if we roll our ankle in this way, this is called inversion. Okay, so that's rolling it toward the pinky toe. If you roll it away from the pinky toe, that's called eversion. Okay, so you might want to just kind of do that, actually physically do that, where you roll it towards the, the uh, lateral side of the foot, where the medial side of the foot is coming up. That's called inversion, where if you roll onto the medial side of the foot and the lateral side of the foot comes off the ground, that's called eversion. And that does different kinds of things, making sprained ankles in different kinds of ways. So we do have where we bring our toes up, that's called dorsiflexion, where we bring our toes down or stand on our toes, that's called plantar flexion. And then with our palm, if you rotate your palm to, to where you can see the palm, that's called supination. So you can think of you making a, a cup out of your hand, like almost like a bowl of soup, supination. Pronation is where you roll it um, the other way, so it's palm down. So you see the posterior surface of it. So when we age, our joints are going to experience a decreased production of synovial fluid, thinning of the articular cartilage, loss of ligament length and flexibility, and uh, all these things lead you to being stiff and sore and uh, you know not able to do the same activities that you used to do. I'm hoping by the time I get old, they're going to figure out some solutions to all these things, and so maybe I won't have as much pain as some of the old people I see today. Um, a joint replacement surgery is called arthroplasty, and it's, uh, it's basically, uh, it counters some of the effects of aging. So arthroplasty could be things like total hip replacements or, you know, shoulder replacements or knee replacements. And it's where they take a, a new uh, artificial uh, joint and they cut and remove the old parts and then insert the new parts. So that's an arthroplasty. We can do that with, a, with also, uh, well, any of your major synovial joints we can do uh, have that replaced. So you can see they come in and just remove all these materials, put in the, uh, the replacement materials, surgically implant them, you heal over the course of a couple of months, and you're good to, to, to go. Okay, well that was a quick little view of x-rays. 
some bone diseases, some ways we look at bones, and then some different joints. So rate, make sure you're a great student. Make sure you are doing your study guides. Make sure you're keeping up with your reading, keeping up with uh, all that you need to do. And uh, if you have questions, please email. Uh, and uh, I will see you next time.